Hello, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to wrap things up with our permission schemes. Today we're going to marry our projects with permission schemes. We're going to put it all together. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if there's any questions about anything that I talk about in this video, please let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. All right, so by this point, you would have watched two other videos. I had a video on global roles so that you would understand how to create the roles. Make sure you go look for that video. And then last week, I created a video on the permission scheme. I broke down everything in the permission scheme and explained to you all the different settings and what all the different permissions do. And I also showed you and we created or we assigned the roles that we had developed, that we had created in the global roles, we had put them into the permission scheme. But that's not all. We still need to do one last step. And in this video, I'm gonna show you that very last step. So when you're in Jira, you're gonna to go to your project that you want to change the permission schemes on. You do need to be the project administrator for that project. And you're gonna navigate your way down here to project settings. From within project settings, you're going to come down to permissions. So there's actually two things that we got to do. The first thing we have to do is apply that permission scheme that we developed with all the right roles. We're going to have to put it into the project. And then the second thing we're going to have to do is then empower the people, empower the permission scheme, empower the users and marry them all together. So let's walk over those steps now. So to do the permission, you're gonna click on permission first, and then on the far right hand side, you're gonna have actions over here. You're gonna click on that actions, and we're gonna use a different scheme. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to select the scheme that we created last week. So you're gonna just hit associate. All right, and so now it's very, very quick. Uh, your permission scheme that you designed will now be applied to this project, and now it's time to go empower the project. So we're looking at things on the right side, like this administrator, these developer roles, these user roles. These are still not very valuable. Even though we've created the roles and they exist, and even though we've assigned a permission on the left side of that permission scheme to that role on the right side, it doesn't do anything until we do this next portion. And the next portion here is, we're gonna go to the people section of your project and then you're gonna add people. Now this is where things can get a little interesting. You can explicitly call out person by person and you can add person A to this role of developer or user or administrator, person B to the role of developer, user or administrator, or you can go and create groups. If you go and create a group and, and really your site administrators need to do the groups for you, but if you have a group, you can assign an entire group into a specific role. That way you're not sitting there and basically adding person by person. So my recommendation is ha talk with your Jira administrator, create groups, put people into those groups, and then come into Jira, find that group, select it here, and then give that group the developer role, right? So you would have like Jira underscore developers. Like this would be a great group where you just put in all your developers into that group, when you onboard a new developer, you put them into that new group, and then whatever project, anywhere across your Jira in, in instances um, that use this, basically that have this configuration of this Jira group gets the developer role with that permission scheme that we created, automatically everything just becomes enabled for them. That way you have very low overhead on onboarding, and the same thing with removing folks, right? When they leave or they don't need access anymore, you take them out of that group and then everything just trickles down. So it's much easier than going into 20 different projects and explicitly assigning folks. So essentially this is all you have to do. Now I don't have any groups for my example, so I'm just gonna add myself with the administrator role so that I can do everything and I'm just gonna click add. You give it a second and then it'll show up. And so in this view here, you're essentially gonna wanna add your group and then it'll have the role and as long as you match up the right role with the power that we gave them in the permission scheme, then everything kind of just falls into place together. If you remember from the last video, if you want individuals to be able to see the project, they're going to have to be in one of these roles and that's it. So as long as you assign an individual or a group 
to the developer or user group, they'll be able to see the project. If you want them to be able to create issues, they're going to have to be in the administrator or developer role over here on this side. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's essentially how you, from a scalability perspective, create your project settings, specifically your permission settings and your people settings so that you can scale your projects very, very easily. And you only have to worry about like having only one funnel as to how do I assign folks. So you want to go and create groups. Now, if you don't know how to create groups and you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below. I don't have a how to create groups in my on my roadmap for Jira videos, but if there's interest, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, let me know in the comment section as well. And if you're doing something differently, if you, if you think you have a, a different or better scalable way of doing the permission schemes, let me know. I'd love to learn. And uh, let's start a conversation down there. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.